Greetings everyone, how are you guys doing today? Thanks for tuning in. You're about to watch me repair an amplifier that I built about a year ago. It's April 2021, so I built this amp in March, April 2020. I'm gonna be replacing all three preamp tube sockets. I built the amp just with what I had on hand. Uh, as you all may know, at the time, about a year ago, uh, a lot of places weren't shipping parts, so I just used what I had, and it turns out that the preamp tube sockets that I used were total garbage. So uh, I'm gonna replace them with some good quality sockets, and here we go. Ninja, set of Batman cards, thin gummy demo tape, we got a moose, we got uh, this shady guy in the back, you know, some uh, good contact cleaner, the, uh, the archives here, the resources, a nice pack of, um, 1988 Tufts, baseball cards, some meters, and some tube diagrams. Anyway, here's the uh, amp I'm going to service. Here's some parts for an amp that I'm going to build next, but I'm going to clean my rig before I build that amplifier, and I'll take you through all of that. But this amp here that I also built, uh, it's like a 20 to 30 watt cathode biased amp. It's got three... Uh, nine pin alpha tube positions here you can see i mean our uh, preamp tube positions preamp these are the two octal output tube sockets there those are good sockets those are good quality sockets these sockets are shitty and this socket right here needs to be replaced and actually if i'm a man of true conscience which i should consider myself to be i should replace all three of these sockets with these much better quality ceramic sockets that I have here and you can see I got two more right there so that's what I really plan to do once I get down to it is to replace all three of those preamp tube sockets which is kind of like rebuilding that whole section of the amp I don't know if the even if, if the filament wiring is going to survive that kind of surgery so I might have to redo the heaters but all in all uh, it's worth it for uh, the guy that the owner of the amplifier and for uh, me to know that it's done right Anyhow, so this is uh, step one, and we're going to move on from here by getting into taking this thing apart and taking those sockets out, hitting them uh, down the street with a baseball bat, and then installation of these sockets into the holes in the chassis, wiring it all up, watching me probably get frustrated, and then uh, the moment of victory when it's all done. So uh, stay tuned. And have a good day. All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, so I did things a little out of order. I actually ended up changing my my uh, or cleaning up my situation here. <laughs> yeah, this is this is it clean actually. And I started work on the uh, amplifier here, on replacing that tube socket. And this is it all cleaned up. You see, I've got some uh, on deck projects over here. Um, Right here, this is going to be next, uh, the single-ended champ style amp that I'm going to build for uh, my buddy Jesse. And that's, these are parts for an RCA uh, BA2C clone. Not that, that's the voice call from a speaker. Um, yeah, so I cleaned up a little bit, and uh, I've got to work on the amplifier here. So I've already got the old tube socket out. Where is it? Here's the old tube socket, and you can kind of see, I know it's hard to do it with one hand, but the, uh, let's see if I can show you here. This body of the socket is, um, it just has so much movement in there. You can see how much that's just shifting back and forth inside the uh, the metal housing that attaches it to the chassis there through the two uh, holes. And that means that every time you're uh, tube rolling or putting a tube in and out, um, this is moving and the, pin, the, the inside here of these pins is getting more flex than it probably should be and starting to develop um, not so great connections or starting to lose their good connections, I should say. Um, so I've got the, uh, this is out, and this is really probably like a $2 socket that I'll never use again. 
and I've got a uh, ceramic socket in here and I managed to salvage the, um, it's dirty in there right now, it's dirty. I've managed to salvage the filament wiring. I've uh, wired it up the way that it was and um, we're gonna get to finishing the wiring on the rest of the socket and then testing the amplifier out to see if uh, that solves the problem. And if so, then uh, at that point, I'll probably proceed with replacing the other two sockets, but this is no small task. Uh, okay, more soon. All right, so here we are back with the uh, tube socket replacement completed. It's fully um, wired up now. This is a, a, a nine pin uh, preamp tube position wired in parallel, as is the first one. You've got two parallel stages feeding a long tailed pair phase inverter to the output. So here, here I am back at it. Um, I'm in the middle of the uh, replacement of the V1 position tube socket. So uh, you can see I've got it all removed there. Uh, everything's desoldered and the socket's taken out. And I want to show you one of the other things that's happening with these sockets that I do not like. And uh, this amp, by the way, was made less than a year ago or around a year ago. And um, this should not be happening. See, see that? That's not good. That's not a good. That's not a good sign. And that's happening with a bunch of these. Uh, you know, on uh, this socket, on the, the other, this one here that I replaced, and you want to turn the amp over here. You can actually see right there, where that one's kind of sticking out there. I don't like that. So, I think they are, all three of them are going to get replaced. Uh, I'm using slightly different sockets than I originally planned because um, these sockets here require a larger chassis hole there they mount underneath and uh, it's not gonna fit they're not gonna they're, they're they're just a little bit too have a little bit too big of a diameter there to uh, really work so I had another good ceramic tube socket that I use right there and I've got a couple of vintage excellent quality um, sockets when back when uh, tubes were you know good technology and um, companies made quality components for them <laughs> uh, so I'm going to use these two uh, sockets for the other to replace the other two the one that I got going now this one and then that uh, phase inverter socket and I suspect that that third one is probably going to be the hardest to replace because it's got the most going on there and it's right in the middle of everything and you might may, you might also notice that I um kind of neatened up and changed the wiring from the master volume over to uh, the output section here before it was routed around uh, kind of like around this way I'm not sure why I think I was trying to avoid getting it too close to the speaker jack or something I don't know what I was thinking when I did that but I wasn't thinking very wasn't thinking a lot I guess so hopefully that'll make a slight improvement and um, yeah, we'll check back in once we get this other socket here replaced, wired up, and then tested. So here we are again. I've got that uh, first V1 uh, tube socket right here replaced and all wired up. So now I've replaced V2 and V1. Uh, I have yet to replace V3. The amp is on, and it sounds pretty decent, but if I jiggle the, uh, the tube here, this tube... And V and V three. Listen, up. hear that? I'm just touching. Right now, I'm gonna jiggle V two. Nothing. And V one. Nothing. So um, we're 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 on to something here. We're doing good. And uh, I've got a guitar plugged in, and the amp sounds pretty good so far. Let's check it out. Check this out. This is pretty all right so far, but um. A little ways to go.
turn it up. So I've got a 12 AX7 in V1, a 12 AU7 in V2, and another AX7 in V3. That AU7 makes uh, the gain a little bit more manageable, but it's still plenty crunchy. awful blarding noise which really is going to be most obvious on a big palm muted E like I was just doing there so that sounds nice and uh, clear just the way it should Taking a part of the uh, or dewiring, desoldering, whatever of the, uh, the phase inverter uh, tube socket here, V3 in this amplifier, and uh, sure enough, I've, I'm already kind of pissed off. <laughs> it's not easy, you know, getting in there with this. Uh, it look doesn't look that bad, but getting in there with this big old thing and trying not to touch or burn any of the other wires, and if I do so, it's going to mean replacing those two and. You know, I can see that I put a zip tie on there. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I'm listening to uh, my good buddy Gene Shepard, who helps me uh, through time, hard times like this, tough times like this. He's been a great comrade. And uh, here we go. So I'll check back in in a moment once I get this thing completely desoldered and I get this piece of shit tube socket taken out of this uh, otherwise excellent sounding amplifier. All right, I'm about halfway there. Let's do the other half. All right, here we are. Now I have uh, completed the replacement of the third, the V3 tube socket and I've wired it up and uh, here we go the amplifier is on it's a little too late for me to do a sound test but the amps on you can kind of hear the speakers there the little hiss of the amplifier being on I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit because I just cranked it up so you could hear that hiss but enough so um, now here I'm gonna wiggle the tube that, that third, third socket there, nothing. Wiggle V2, nothing. And wiggle V1, nothing. So this is nice and stable now. I'm really excited. And um, tomorrow I'm going to do a loud sound test during the day when it'll be less offensive to my neighbors and my family members downstairs. And uh, that's going to wrap this bad boy up. I'm pretty excited. And I'm really excited to get it back to its, its owner. And... Uh, so that he can proceed with uh, the business of uh, enjoying playing some rock and roll rather than having to worry about troubleshooting some bullshit fucking problem. So uh, stay tuned, and the final sound test will be tomorrow. All right, everybody, I've got the uh, and the chassis back in the cabinet here, and it's sitting on top of the a speaker cabinet here, a 112 with a 15 ohm celestial gold in it and um, the V1 volume is almost all the way up the V2 volume is uh, about two-thirds of the way between two-thirds and three-quarters and the tone knob is all the way up here and uh, let's give it a spin we got 12 AX7 and V1 12 AU7 and V2 and a 12 AX7 in the phase inverter spot those output tubes I haven't discussed them yet are 6P3S-E they're Russian made tubes and they are just bulletproof. They sound great. Um, uh, so without any further ado, here we go. <laughs>
Not too shabby so far. Nice and clear, not very noisy. <laughs> That's it everyone. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, stay tuned for more amp repair videos in the future. Have a good one.